All right, YouTube, let's go ahead and get this thing cracking. What's good, world? It's your boy, Mastermind Man, and this is another weekday drop 2020 July series, man. Let's get right into it. But before we jump into it, y'all be sure to follow your boy, Master 23 Man, all platforms, Mastermind RGTV on YouTube, and Real Gamer on all podcast platforms. We here, we there, we everywhere. Let's go, baby. Listen, man. We got a lot to talk about. I probably end up break this breaking this segment down uh, to about two parts because I know I've been in and out of here, man. I've been tied up. Got a new crypto podcast going on the Luma uh, uh, platform. Shout out to Luma. Uh, we got some more stuff we cooking up. We got a lot of stuff cooking up, man. But we in here bouncing back with some gaming. But uh, listen, man, I gotta come here and talk about this Last of Us remake for PS Five. Let's let's let let's let's break this down and chop it up for a little bit. So, I'm a really big fan of of, of Last of Us, and I've I've played it. You know, had it when it first came out. Uh, beat it several times, of course. Played Last of Us two, pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? Uh, played the remake version they had for PS4, and now here we go again. We got a remake version, remake version coming for PS5. So the thing is with this. I'm a bit, I, I seen, a, they just dropped like another little trailer, like a, they was explaining the new stuff they added on to it, which is pretty dope. Now, this is one of those things to where you're like, yo, this is like the third remake or third remastered or whatever for the game, mostly remastered for the game. So I can understand the logic that, you know, uh, playing on PS4, they was only limited to so much of the technical abilities of what they were able to do to the game. And now PS5 give them a much more, um, you know, uh, tools to play around with and things to do in the game so they can really make uh, Last of Us 1 how they made 2 or whatnot. So I can see, I seen the graphics. The graphics look pretty good. Uh, AI is much more smarter. The details on the, on the face structure. A lot of collect collectibles in the game, uh, 3D sound, uh, the haptic feedback, new controls, you know what I'm saying, with the weapons and how you play. The details on the graphics is one thing I'm pretty impressed with. But, peep game. So, I'm playing on an uh, older cell, uh, Sony television. Forgot which particular model this is, but uh, when you hit the, uh, the VRR mode, when you turn on the VRR mode, in this, in my situation, in the Sony television, to turn on the VR mode uh, into the HDMI, it locks it into game mode. And what that does is it enables the VR and the 120 hertz. But the thing is, it locks it in game mode, and game mode makes a lot of the games like the brightness. It takes the brightness out, and a lot of like brown, uh, darker colors. You know what I'm saying? And I don't really like that. I'm more of a, like, uh, bright. I like the, um, a lot of bright, colorful games. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, with that particular mode, I don't, I, don't, I don't like how it looked in Last of Us 2. And I'm saying all this to say that, you know, because for us to have Sony TVs, you know what I'm saying, thinking we're going to, you know, really game on these things and they lock us in game mode and it cuts down the quality of the graphics for a game like Last of Us 1 Remake for the PS5, I don't need you cutting that thing down, you know? So with that being said, um, with a game like Last of Us 1 Remake, I'm hoping that, you know, even in um, when, when we're locked in these game modes and we're in the HDR and all this, it still looks good and not so dark in the game because a game like Last of Us can get pretty dark in some areas of the game so you know for me i would probably be playing with that mode off but one thing i'm interested to see like of course you know the higher frame rate uh and all these things into the game but i don't know if it's worth like you know 60 70 bucks yo that's the only thing and and like i said i've played the game beat the game several times but i don't know if it's worth it but this is one of those games to where you probably have to buy yourself to really experience uh the next generation thing about it. and i think this game is one of those you're going to get immersed and locked into it and I, I really i truly think that you know just by looking at the trailer like yo them graphics do look 
they, they, they look a lot better. I hope y'all can see my face expression on YouTube for the Anchor podcast viewers here. But the graphics do look pretty good. You know, I'm a graphical guy. So if if they release it, which I doubt it, for the new PlayStation Plus services uh, later on through the year, which I doubt they would probably do. Um, if they do that, I'll definitely be picking it up or playing it. Uh, but if we can play like a trial version on it, that'll be pretty dope. i do that. Uh, but I'm not so excited about it. But I am excited about the new things they added into the game. I just don't know if it's really worth 60, 70 bucks. Especially after I already paid, you know what I'm saying, I already paid for the game twice before and, and have it. And really, I was a little mad at the last one they, they released, Last of Us 2, you know what I'm saying. Um, but it still was a great game. So... I'm interested to see how it's going to go. You know what I'm saying? I may give it a shot. I'm not quite sure, but my high hopes is really about this God of War. Listen, folks. God of War is dropping in November, man. The best PlayStation game, I think, hands down. And I think when we get our hands on this one, man, yo, the best, the best game on PlayStation, hand down. I can't wait to see it on PS5. See, that's the exciting thing about this. And, and I think Last of Us, a game like Last of Us Remake for the PS5 is perfect around this time. But it's like, yo, if they would not have dropped it for PS4 and this was just, this was the second remastered version of the game or whatever, or the, yeah, the second one, I think it would have sold more or did much better because we got new God of War dropping. We got Last of Us Remake. Uh, rem oh yeah remake for the ps i, I want to say remaster but remake for the ps5 and last of us and god of war was one of those top two tier games for playstation so you know playstation is is doing a great job with releasing these games and we got some good stuff in the kitchen i mean in, in the kitchen cooking up i'm pretty excited for but the one game i'm excited for this year is god of war I'm not even going to speak anything else about it because I'm going to save all of my rants and all of my excitement for when the game drop. So let's move on, man. Uh, Ubisoft is working on multiple Assassin's Creed games. They're in development. So I'm a little interested about this because I think if, they, if they're working on one, rumors that they're working on one that's going to be taking place in Asia, like an Asia culture, culture or whatnot, kind of like how the Ninja game is on PlayStation. Yo, they released that for PS5 uh that was pretty dope you know but if they are that's dope but i'm one i want to see the approach they take uh with the whole assassin creed timeline and everything and you know it's multiple games they're working on what do you mean like another dlc for uh van Hella? you know what i'm saying so we're not really sure what is what ubisoft got up their sleeve but I'm pretty pumped uh, to hear that they're working on multiple Assassin's Creed's. So, pretty excited about that. I hope we get a Black Flag um, update for, like, higher frame rates or a PS5 update for Black Flag. I think we deserve it. Uh, but also, something else, some bad news about Ubisoft. So, Ubisoft is also working on the Avatar game, too. Avatar game looks amazing. Amazing. It's pushback. I'm not too mad at it, though, because you want to take your time on a game that's like this, that already has high praises. Avatar, we know Avatar, they're working on a new movie. The movie is going to go bananas. We know that. Uh, so when, when this game come out, the game looks amazing. When this game come out, it's going to look amazing and all type of bugs, we don't need that. Ubisoft already struggled with a lot of bugs or whatnot in, in Assassin's Creed games. We don't need those same issues lagging over to a game like Avatar. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not mad at them pushing that game back. I think they should stay in the lab, do what they need to do. But they need to drop it right around when the movie come out to kind of have that promotion and everything in the market. It'll be a good marketing strategy if they push out and have this game bug free, like a good day one patch ready to play. When the movie drop, I think that'll be dope. Or at least a week after the movie, or a week before the movie. Uh, so that'll be really good. But it's they're pushing it back. It's cool. Take your time. Work on the books. Get everything situated. Moving on, talking about Square Enix making NFTs for Final Fantasy VII 25th anniversary. Yo, so listen. A lot of y'all be just dogging NFTs online. 
for the people that don't really understand it, but for those that don't understand it, those that do understand it, listen, there's either here and there, but it's the future, regardless of what you say and what you think. Blockchain technology is the future, and it's going to be something that's in, incredible. Web3 technology, blockchain technology, NFT, all these things are like in a little bubble that's capsulated, and it's, it's the future. You can't really refute it. So for the mere fact that we got Microsoft, not Microsoft, uh, Minecraft, they're like, ah, oh, screw NFTs. We got people dogging NFTs on Twitter. I see so much bad news about NFTs, probably because the market is down right now. But that doesn't mean that it's not a non-legitimate thing. It's definitely the future. So to see Square Enix jump into NFTs and for the Final Fantasy VII and for this, for this to be right around the time of a 25th anniversary, I'm interested to see how they go about it and how successful it is. Uh, I had it pulled up. I didn't just write. I didn't write the full details on my board of which blockchain they'll be working with or whatnot. But whichever blockchain they work with or whatever route they take with the whole NFT project, I'm pretty excited for. It. And I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, for all you non-believers out there that think this is just a hoax or think that NFTs is just something just, you know, it's going to be disappeared years to come, I'm telling you, man, it's the future, yo. It's the future. And I'm excited to see what Square Enix do. What Who really need to get into NFTs? I spoke about this on previous podcasts before. Be sure to check out all the podcast episodes, RGTV on all platforms, Real Game on all platforms. Listen, man, Grand Theft Auto. We got some news about Grand Theft Auto. Um, of course, the news is public, but uh, the news that we do, they're saying that it's going to be um, basically modern day time of Vice City, which we kind of already knew. But, yo, I just like the fact that they kind of keep releasing information about it. And shout out to the homie Hip Hop Gamer. He claimed that it's going to be a female lead character. I can see that being possible, especially if they do it in the area of like, um, like mob type doing like, like mafia or mob doing in Miami type Pablo type deal down in Miami. I can see it being like a female lead character, especially if they do, uh, Liberty city, uh, LA and Miami, or they do multiple cities like Miami and some other city in GTA. I can see them having a lead character of a female or, you know, a male switching back and forth, kind of like how they did with the last Grand Theft Auto, uh, switching back and forth or whatnot. It'll be dope to switch from a male to a female. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. But GTA need to get into NFTs or they need just need to get into the whole uh, scope of, of Lope, uh, the, the scope of Lope, the scope of just blockchain technology, period. They, they need to get into that because it's a lot of areas that they can capitalize and really uh, change the framework of games. And I, like I said, then this next GTA is set up to be another probably if it's set up to be another 10 to five year uh, wave game, they're going to have to get into NFTs. They're going to have to. They're going to have to get into some type of blockchain technology transaction, uh, next level crypto type type action if they don't and they plan on being the 10 to 15 year of uh, structure game they're gonna fail they they're gonna fail it's gonna sell good you know but for let's say grand theft auto 6 in the year 2026 and you know 2026 is a time of you know let's we, we're just we're just talking a hypothetically story uh, let's just say Bitcoin is at freaking 50, 50 K normally hundred K normally all these other blockchain technologies are doing, going through the roof. NFTs is booming. Ethereum is, is freaking six, 7,000. Everything is just looking lovely in the crypto space, uh, six, 10 years down the road and GTA, uh, just now getting into technology like that. You mean tell me they're not going to have a hard time? No. They need to go ahead and capitalize on it while the market is early and get into it while it's early and get into it while it's down. Uh, this is something that I feel like a game like GTA will really capitalize and the fans would appreciate. And it'll be a win-win situation for everybody. So, for the mere fact, we get Square Enix getting into it. That's why I said I can't wait to see how, it, um, how they go about it and the success rate of it. 
the success rate is going to determine uh, other games. I, I wouldn't say determine, but I would say give a, a more sense of, okay, y'all messed up here. We're going to improve this here. Or y'all did this. We're going to do this a little bit different. Or we're going to run on this blockchain. We're going to do, you know what I'm saying? So it's always good to see big players like someone like Square Enix stepping into the uh, into the crypto world, into the NFT world or whatever, and saying, hey, we're going to put our dupes up. We're going to do this and we're going to do it right. And if we don't do it right, we got other games that we're still going to try this this uh, particular technology or whatever and try to move, capitalize, move this way. So it's a plus. Keep your eyes open for the Final Fantasy VII NFT coming soon for the 20, uh, 25th anniversary. I think it's going to be pretty dope. Moving on, talking about PlayStation Discord deal. You remember that PlayStation uh, and a Discord deal they had back in the day? Not back in the day. <laughs> I speak of like it's so long ago, but recently. PlayStation made a deal with Discord or whatnot. So that deal may go beyond voice chat. Yo, listen. If that deal go beyond voice chat and it get into a point to where... So Discord... Speaking of, of blockchain technology, NFTs and all that, Discord is a good utilization. Well, I, I can't really say good, but I would say a popular uh, utilization for NFTs or whatnot. And that's what you mostly see in the NFT industry right now is, you know, private channels and Discord or whatever, the way they're moving. So I think of, you know, the whole integrating all of this stuff in together and PlayStation you know, with the Discord, the beyond voice chat, some type of video chat, we'll be able to link up with our friends in Discord. Everyone link up there, the audio chat here, and we're able to stream on Twitch and keep our Discord audio and video all in one spot here at Twitch and Discord. Like just blending a lot of these things in with with the platform and the console gaming. Dope. I can't wait to see what else they got coming down the line for it. Because I truly believe that, you know, if they integrate a lot of this stuff in a lot of these different platforms, it's a win-win for us as the gamers and the developers because it's freaking cool. So just something to keep an eye on, PlayStation and Discord. And Xbox is even getting a little Discord uh, hookup as well too in the future. So I'm pretty excited to see what Discord and PlayStation got up their sleeves Especially if we're talking about Beyond Voice Chat. I'm all for it. Moving on, man. So, PlayStation. Some more PlayStation news. PlayStation bought up another esports uh, platform. So, keep in mind, uh, PlayStation uh, purchased a uh, they, they, they purchased another esports back some time ago. It was more of like fighting for like Street Fighter uh, esports or whatnot. So, Hey, PlayStation buying up all these platforms for esports and whatnot. Yo, esports is what? Getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. PlayStation got some cooking, y'all, with esports. We don't know the whole full scope, but we know for a fact PlayStation got some really, really scooping, scooping up. Like they're cooking some in the kitchen hot with esports, man, because they're buying up too many esports. Uh, platforms and too many too many things related to esports, and they already got a good hold on um, Street Fighter. That's the esports competitive game. Uh, Call of Duty. We know that uh, the new Call of Duty that's dropping in October will be. Uh, they're still going to have exclusive content for the PlayStation. So, yo, it's it's still looking like an up and end for PlayStation on game wise and esports wise. I can't can't wait to see what they got cooking up in the pot for that man moving on talking about um let's let's speak about the metaverse for a little bit uh since we're all on on the road of blockchain and nft technology or whatnot dubai is uh is home to over a thousand companies in the metaverse i had to read this twice like whoa so let's break this down for a second first of all dubai is one of the richest places right they got all this money beautiful place beautiful people like Cool. They got you mean to tell me they got over a thousand operating companies in the metaverse? Yo, y'all keep thinking blockchain technology and all this metaverse and NFT crap is all just talk here, say nah, this stuff is real. Yo, 
for these guys to have all this money and they're invested in it and be they're gonna be I had the whole article up. Yo, I was freaking out when I seen this because it's a lot of money that they're throwing into the metaverse. And when you see big players like this hopping into something digital like this, this is a win-win for us gamers, man. Of course, of course, or us gamers, we've already, you know, essentially used to the metaverse because these digital worlds or whatnot. But to see this is it's beautiful. Uh, let me see. I pulled the money. Where was show me the money which contributed five hundred million dollars to our national uh, economy. Man, listen, they got over a thousand businesses in metaverses. We got to learn how to um, create these things in the metaverses and and create these NFTs and do these things and get real popular on Web three, man. Because it's about to it's, it's yo next year gaming. This is where I see. Next year game. And I'm speaking from a VR, AR, XR, all of this stuff type of perspective. But uh, one thing I will say also in this blended up conversation, I will speak about consoles a little bit. But the whole metaverse future, next year gaming is going to be bananas. It's going to be bananas. Like the metaverse, first of all, is only getting bigger and bigger. And I think when we get to a point to where we're able to purchase something in one metaverse and take it to another one and utilize all the things that we purchase and utilize it in multiple metaverses, that's going to be a key factor to where we're able to utilize our digital assets in multiple places, in multiple uh, universes powerful and dope i think that's what's going to really shape um the whole crypto gaming space period you know what i'm saying and to see big players like this get into the space already got businesses generating in these different blockchains or in these different metaverses whatnot beautiful to see and it's only going to get better in the future with gaming i think um especially when you when you tap into pay to play or whatnot yo a lot of these pay pay to play uh pay pay to play earn games are getting better and better. And what I mean by that is before um they had like a it's like a system it was set up to where a lot of these games don't really be fun. You know what I'm saying? But we're starting to they're starting to, you know, get a lot of more a lot more creative with these games. So these games are starting to be more fun, a lot of more immersive. Um uh, a lot of activity, you know what I'm saying? And if we're able to keep games like this afloat for a long time, like just imagine when consoles get into the point to where we're we're playing, we pay for a game and we get paid to play these games on the daily on consoles. When Web3 and the whole blockchain technology hit on the console space, that's when it's going to go from here to there because it's over a billion and some trillions of something. I say billions, billions of something of users, gamers over here and the the pool of growth. Honestly, I don't think a lot of these companies are uh, will be able to handle the growth of when gaming really step into when Web3 really take off. I don't think a lot of these companies are in a position or even ready to handle a lot of this stuff. And, um, yo, it's going to be a tidal wave coming, especially when you're talking about consoles. How many people got a PlayStation? How many people got an Xbox? Nintendo. Yo, how many people got a Nintendo? So, let's paint this picture for a second. Imagine all the things I just spoke about. Uh, we taking our digital assets in these metaverses. Let's say one game is available for Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. Uh, the developers, let's just say the developers need some Web3 startups. It's a Web3 game. It's really immersive, really fun, activity in it. We're like, you got our engagement. We're here. We're locked in. You got so many people uh, just willing to pay for the game and, and play the game. Normal price charge. Charge what you charge on the console or make it even free to play. I'm going to come back to the free free to play perspective a little bit. But let's just say we still pay for the game or whatever. Boom. We purchase digital assets inside of this game and we're able to go to an Xbox 
with our digital assets. We're able to go to Steam or Nintendo or PlayStation with our digital assets. Jump in and out of these digital worlds. Boom. The game is doing real good. Two years. Let's say 2025, 2026. They drop another version of the game. Maybe part two. Oh, part two. You got is even hooked even more. Now, we're able to take those same digital assets that we purchased from the first game and then take it to the second game, trans just an easy transaction. And the second game, you see what I'm saying? So with that type of concept, when those things come into play and we're getting paid to play, we're spending money and we're able to trade out our digital assets uh, on these games cross-platform, through the rocket ship, I see you on Mars, not even the moon. We're driving past the moon at this point. I see you at Mars. And when we get to Mars, we'll be the next stop is going to be Pluto. Let's just say that. Now, let's speak about, uh, I said I was going to come back to, I gave you the concept of more like consoles or whatnot. Mm, it, it, like I'm thinking of so many games. I'm thinking of GTA. I'm thinking of Call of Duty, Fortnite, free to play. That's it. Free to play games. We know, obviously, free-to-play games has been the winner. We know that that concept worked. We got uh, Warzone or whatnot. That concept worked. Easy jump in the game, although it takes up a lot of space. <laughs> Easy jump in the game, you know what I'm saying? Good game, have a good time. Free-to-play. Road Company, very interesting game. Free-to-play. Uh, Fortnite, been out for quite some time, still doing numbers. Y'all seen what it can do, especially when... Uh, celebrities would not interact with the game and y'all try to make it popular when celebrities get in but us real gamers been here playing the game since before it was even popular or whatever but anyways those things bananas you know what i'm saying so free to play games we already know is a good route to go now imagine a free to play game buying multiple digital assets in these games we already do it anyway Buying multiple digital assets in these free to, in these free games, we're able to trade our digital assets for currency and cash out that currency for real money, pay to play. We we beat a level. We 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 get past a hard level. We get a little coin back. We use that same coin to buy something digital in the game, and we decide we want to trade it or sell it off. Hey man, I need some. I need some. I got to pay my light bill, man. Let me trade. Let me trade these skins off. Cash out. Boom. Done. When that process, easy transaction like that happening in gaming, I'm telling you, next level, that is the future I've been predicting for quite some time. Like, yo, gaming is going to get crazier and much more better. It's coming. Just keep your eyes on it. But um, that's my whole, like, little breakdown of the metaverse, uh, Web3, and games, the whole structure of ideal of how it can work. Because I truly think that, yo, a game like, imagine something like The Sims. The Sims, you got your clothes, all these items or whatnot that comes with the game. But imagine if we're able to customize a couch, customize uh, clothing, different clothing designs or whatnot, and we're able to put them in the game. Now, shout out to Hip Hop Gamer again. He spoke a little bit about uh, how gaming blockchain technology is going to work in the future about Basically, like, well, let's say PlayStation will take uh, a, a bit of a, uh, like a fee for you, you know, uh, making these transactions or whatnot. Yo, I can see that. And I can, you know, hey, we're on, we're on a PlayStation platform. I got a digital asset. You know what I'm saying? I want to trade or whatever. You know, PlayStation take a dollar. It'd be a dollar fee or whatever type of fee because we're using the platform to make these things happen. That right there, yo, next level gaming and i think that's gonna be the true true that's gonna be the next gen of gaming and since technology is running so fast hey man usually consoles last about six years that lifespan may be cut down to maybe about three or two now so especially if they're having a hard time getting blockchain technology into this older technology uh, hardware so hey gaming is gonna be looking exciting in the future i'm excited man 
That's all I got for y'all right now, man. Anchor is kicking us out of here. It's all cool. We're going to be rolling behind the scenes on YouTube for a little bit longer. But before Anchor kick us out of here, man, y'all be sure to follow me everywhere. master 23 Mind on IG. I'll be doing the weather reports there also. And on YouTube, Mastermind RGTV, Real Gamer on all platform. We out, baby. And Anchor just kicked us, but it's all cool, man. Listen, man. This next generation gaming is gonna be is gonna be awesome. Oh, hold up! Before I get out of here, YouTube, y'all getting exclusive. Check this. Um, so Sony is hoping to improve PlayStation Cloud streaming platform. I mean performance uh, with a new uh, multiple GPU patent. Uh, I'm pretty interested about that. So the thing is, I want to speak up a little bit about that. Uh, the thing is about that is Xbox Game Pass does a really great job at um, this whole cloud gaming or whatnot. Now, I've been testing it out. I'm going to do another podcast segment because I don't want this one to go over too, too long. But I'm going to do another podcast segment really breaking down and elaborating more about Xbox Game Pass. I spoke a little bit about it on the last two episodes, but I want to dive deeper into it because I've been testing out playing on, uh, you know, playing on, on weaker Wi-Fi, uh, different type of games. For one thing, I will say, because I want to say some of this stuff for my full, full, full review. Um, when you're playing multiplayer shooters, it's, it's still it's still a problem. It's still a problem. Like, it's, it's much better. You know what I'm saying? Because I've played cloud gaming before. It's much better, but it's still a problem. Uh, when you're playing fighting games um, online, it's still a problem. Just a little bit. Mostly, I see the big problem in shooters, in, in shooter games or whatnot. So, I'm moving left. You know what I'm saying? It's like a little lag left. When I move left, the guy's not, you know what I'm saying? He's like left, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? So, it's still a bit of a problem. But I will say, some of the games, like uh, the car games, they do a really good job at rendering these graphics through cloud. Really good job. And a really good job at backwards capability through the cloud also. Now, PlayStation struggled with a lot of these things. So, when I seen this on Twitter and I was like, yo, oh, dope. Shout out to uh, Next Gen Player, this guy who, who tweeted this. When I seen that post, I was like, yo, I'm interested to see how they're going to do that because, you know, I can see them doing it because Xbox is doing it. So when PlayStation really get into the bag to fix their cloud, to improve their cloud, uh, I wouldn't say fix, but to improve their cloud performance, yo, that's what's up. That's what's up. I'm excited to see because what Xbox is doing, man, is 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 really... I take my hats off the xbox like you you got me sold but y'all still got a couple problems but i i do see uh cloud gaming really getting better and better just through on out the future but the next question is how do you improve how do you have a perfect almost a perfect cloud gaming streaming uh tied to something like you know web3 technology and blockchain tech or whatnot that whole transaction, like the next generation of gaming. Oh man, yo. Some of these thoughts I got to kind of save because it's like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I predict some of these things. Uh, some things I predict be a little bit, uh, a little bit off, but still be right around the range of these things. But yo, the next generation of gaming, I'm talking about PS6. I'm talking about Xbox um, at this point, it probably won't even be a console. X, uh, YouTube, y'all can keep getting more exclusive. So I want to speak about consoles just a little bit. The thing is, man, about consoles, what Xbox has been able to do with this Xbox Game Pass, when they first came out, I said this in multiple podcasts, uh, episodes before, when Xbox came out and said, yo, we don't look at consoles war wars the same, there would be, it's not going to be no more console wars and all of that. Yo, I see what they mean now. So, the it might not even be no more consoles in the future, but this is going to be key. This is going to be a key player for all the console uh players. You're going to have to make your console unique. And it's not going to only have to be unique. It's going to have to be a universal player. 
Why a universal player? It's because blockchain web three technology. If you can make your next console unique and a universal player, you 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 and you're on the right track. You're on the right track. So Nintendo, I'm speaking to you. If you're able to make this next Nintendo, because it's time for a new Nintendo console, if Nintendo is able to pull off a next generation of hardware to where the graphics is way much more better, but we're not even going to get into our Nintendo rant. We're going to say that for another episode. But if Nintendo is able to give us a unique console, truly not on the next gen level, a unique console and a universal, like you know, like cross the board universal type console, they're on the right track. So I'm excited for the future, and um, it's gonna get better and better in gaming. That's all I gotta really say, man. Y'all see the passion and love in my face about this gaming stuff, man. Yo, real fast, what we got here? Speaking about Xbox Game Pass again, yo. They got Watch Dogs, Watch Dogs 2. I seen it on Xbox Game Pass. I'm actually going to play it probably tomorrow. We got Watch Dogs 2 on Xbox Game Pass. And he got a 60 frame boost. It's a 60 frame boost. And like, yo, bruh. I will, I got to say some of this stuff for my Xbox exclusive podcast. I'm going to do all about Xbox. I'm going to save it. But. PlayStation, I love the PlayStation controller, but I do love to see that Xbox is able to release these uh, um, updates through the cloud like this. 60 frames per second on older games, um, new updates, like graphical updates, and you see the changes through the cloud. Like, yo, that's all I got for y'all right now, man. We out this thing. This your boy, Mastermind. Be sure to check out the podcast on all platforms. We here, we there, we everywhere. Real Gamer. You see it in the background, YouTube. Yeah. We be uh, broadcasting on Twitch also. Uh, mostly Cold War because I'm in the league and we be trying to get our league stats up, man. And we trying to prepare ourselves because we will be competing heavy in the league on the next Call of Duty that's dropping in October. Yo, get ready because I'm telling you, if it's anything like Cold War, Y'all going to see me on there, and I'm probably going to be on the big screen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we trying to make some stuff cook, man. So we're getting our league experience in now on Cold War. We're at the top of the list right now in the particular division that we're in. So uh, be sure to check me out on Twitch. And that's 23 Mind. And shout out to all the followers and everybody that's rocking with me. Uh, Team Prodigy, uh, I see you. We out here, man. Game on. New podcast every month, baby. We so hype, man. I may give y'all some every week, man. I got so much stuff to talk about this Xbox, man. This is crazy, yo. We out. Love is love, y'all. Peace.